I'm not fucking leaving. The show goes on. This is my home. They're gonna need a fucking wrecking ball to take me out of here. So now Hexy. So now the price action has, you know, it's been going down a lot here. There's been like a lot of selling. Um, there's been some issues with the, the referral contract, and they kind of had to, you know, take a step back, postpone that. Um, and right now, there's been a lot of action in the Telegram. So anybody who has any questions about Hexy, I would recommend go to the Telegram and read through, uh, check the pinned message actually and there's always there's always a bunch of comments in the telegram so sometimes there's a lot of noise but um let's see here passive crypto show has his own telegram group which i highly recommend joining and he kind of you know whenever he finds something that's kind of like import of importance within the te the hex mobile telegram um he'll kind of post it in his so it looks like there was another there was another um, issue with the freezing and unfreezing in, in the Hexi contract. So, and it looks like they proposed a solution here and they're going to be moving to uh, version 1.1. So I repeat, it looks like if you are in Hexi, if you're in Hex Mobile, it looks like they are moving to version 1.1. Um, now, what will 1.1 entail? Um, I would assume, I believe it's going to be very similar to version one, but 50% liquidity goes to Uniswap and 50% of the transforms go to divs to the people. And the transform rate supposedly now will be pegged to the um, uh, Uniswap price. So... I think that would be incentive. That would incentivize using the transform. So I would anticipate divs to pick up here. So I would I would anticipate divs to pick up here. And um, you know, again, there's there's a lot there's a lot of things happening. You have to really stay on top of things. Um, and but passive crypto shows Telegram. He really he he really kind of focuses the messages there. The important ones kind of filters them through. Um, and so these are the these are the voting options. If you haven't voted yet, if you are in in Hexi, uh, definitely recommend uh, you know kind of reading, try to get an understanding about it, and go vote. Um, but again, uh, Hexi will be moving to version one point one, and and uh, V two has to be uh, corrected with the freezing and uh, the. The freezing and non the freezing and unfreezing. There's there's another there's some some kind of issue with that supposedly. So that's the news with Hexi. Now let's just check out um, and let's see here. Looks like let's see here. And Lotto may be joining here. So stand by. I'm going to send him the link here. Invite, copy to clipboard. So it looks like we may have Lotto, uh, Lotto may be joining us shortly. So that could be fun. And let's see here. So yeah, definitely a lot of stuff in the Hexi Telegram today. I, I was trying to read through it all, but it's just it's so fast. It's so there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but again, I you know I, I definitely recommend. It looks like he'll be on like five, I, I believe. Um, and let's see here, Andy, what's going on, man? On the Jose T, <laughs> what's going on, T? Big day in Hex, yeah, man. T, it's been a while, bro. Um, feel like I saw you back in Pyrobank, man. Like. Like a while ago, 
I think that's when I first I, I first kind of came across you. Um, yeah, dude, back in the day, bro. T. <laughs> here so yeah definitely a lot of stuff going on um you know if you if you're in hexi or if you're trying to kind of do your own research or um you know learn about it again recommend going to the telegram and going to passive crypto shows um telegram his is t.me slash passive crypto show Really kind of solid information there. And let's see here. Max10KX, what's going on, man? Uh, shout out to Max10KX. I see him all the time in the in the Telegram moderating, doing a great job. Um, you know, definitely a big shout out to him. Uh, doing doing awesome there. And uh, Hamza, what's going on, Hamza? What's going on? And I'm trying to think if there's any other kind of announcements. I know there were some, I saw some user interface previews for the hex bet. Let me see. There's just been there's been like a lot. Let's see here. That's the preview for hex bet. And where did I see it? Some was it in passive crypto shows? I think I saw it in here. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So these are just a little bit of samples here. There's a dice moon dice winner so those are kind of you know um looks pretty clean looks pretty clean there's some samples there um now let me pull up here let's see what else did i have i wanted to talk about today yeah no problem man hey keep up the great work bro oh, and it looks like looks like we have lotto in the back so i'm gonna pull in hex lotto What's going on, man? How you doing, Ryan, mate? You good? Yeah, man. What's going on? Hey, wait. One second here. Let, my, my audio is kind of... Let me see. Fix my audio. Speaker. There we go. Test, test, one, two. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, man. What's going on? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Obviously, we've had some issues. We're working hard in the background to resolve all them issues, trying mm. to fight the club still. Um, we believe what we're doing is probably the best thing. We mentioned like in the comment earlier, sometimes you have to take a step backwards to take a step forward. Yeah, um, definitely. So that's kind of like what we're doing, uh, trying to give the community exactly what they wanted, which is um, divs to be flowing in more. Mm. Uh, and I think the actions we're taking are hopefully going to back that up and that's what we're going to see you know moving back to like a v v1.1 yeah um I, I i think this is the best option and then what this does is it allows us to build out this um like fully immutable contract so it will be done and ready exactly mm -hmm. how we want it to be ready while still providing the community with a v1 style contract um i don't see yeah. another way forward unless a community want to wait like it could be anything from six six weeks to two months so i think just taking this step back we we had to yeah. trust at the beginning i know it's not perfect in crypto but mm -hmm. at the same time we kind of nailed it with v1 um and i think we gained the community's trust so yeah. at the same time what we're going to do is we're going to step back like i said we don't don't really want to have to take a step back but sometimes we just got to do that in life to yeah move forward. yeah yeah definitely definitely um, so and, and and i think it will incentivize transforms again as well there's even certain things we can do with like stepping back and doing a v1.1 style contract where we can peg like the price of hexi to the uniswap price and then also I've offered a 10% referral bonus on top. So transforms will always uh, be over incentivized rather than the Uniswap price. The Uniswap price will just be a way for people to sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so right now, like I was looking at the votes and it looks like it's leaning towards. Let me see here. So it looks like it's leaning towards uh, V1.1. Um, so V1.1, that will entail kind of um, going back to the V1 kind of um 
um, system, and That's but right. all but but also the but also then pegging. It looks like possibly pegging the transform rate to the Uniswap price. That's correct. Okay. So yeah, and and then fifty percent will go to liquidity on Uniswap, correct? correct. And then fifty percent. So, the team are basically going to retract from taking any split whatsoever. So okay. there, there is zero team in any participation of this. Everything that is brought in is going to be either going towards providing liquidity or it will be going towards um, dividends. It's as simple as that. There yeah. might be a percentage that could potentially go towards buying, um, buying up on Uniswap. So in other words, that could potentially pump the price, but there is zero team split in this. When when okay. we when we go to this V V one point one like interim before we move to like V three because we have to have a V three. That's what part of the um, look, that's like what part of the announcement was earlier is we uh -huh. have to have a V three. You know we've 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 found certain things with V two that weren't present in any of the audits, and we did have audits done. There was like three of them done. Uh, you know, we, it's only just become apparent that there were certain things uh, yeah. wrong with that contract that we we cannot have, we we cannot get around basically. So yeah. there's nothing we can do by altering like surrounding depths that will change that. So the only the only way forward is to move to V3. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, we're gonna you know step back while V3 is made. Um, okay. And, and then, like I say, you know, if if everything if everything goes through and works as it should do this v this v 1.1 will just provide like an interim period where everybody can still like gain dividends and and like i say ev every single team member is going to be taken out of this uh, and also not just that but the team will own zero hexi out of this so there will not be a team split a hexi either so the only way we are ever going to get to that point is when basically we can uh present v3 as it should be presented which v2 should have been presented like that but you know this is software we're trying to build a whole ecosystem and it's difficult yeah. we can't we can't like lie or move away from that fact yeah uh, we, uh, you could say we try to run before we could walk because we had a lot of community pressure and we just wanted to deliver to the community what they wanted um and maybe you know maybe we rush things a little bit or try too hard to deliver to the community when really we should have maybe took an extra couple of weeks to do a bit more testing and things like that mm -hmm. so what what we're going to do is like i say the team will own zero hexi they will also uh, get zero participation in this interim period so it will literally all be owned by the community and whatever transforms uh, take place the, the dividends and um, the dividends and everything are going to be completely owned by the community and the liquidity. Yeah, yeah. And it seemed to me, well, I got into V1, I think, like the last two or three days, and it was paying pretty good. But it seemed like the overall impression from everybody else, they seemed to be pretty happy with, with V1. Everyone was like, hey, V1, it's going great. The divs are paying good. Um, so, but, that, but V1 now, that was paying 25% divs, correct? Uh, correct. It was. It actually started at ten percent divs. Uh, then we had a vote and moved towards fifteen percent. And then there was X amount that was going towards liquidity. And then we had another vote and it went up to twenty five percent. Then we had like uh, the issues with the mobile free mint, where the free mint was outweighing. People were basically just abusing the free mint of Hexi and were just dumping it on the market, which was hurting the price. So yeah. obviously everything we're doing is like we're just learning in the process of what we're yeah. doing. And you know, until until you put everything we do into like real world scenarios, you're never gonna get like the full effect of what's gonna happen. It's not something you can put through a computer and work out because it's human behavior. Yeah. So, you know, we can't anticipate what human behavior is gonna be, even though like with Hexi. We've tried to build all like the strengths into the weaknesses of the coin. Like we knew potentially it could have got done. That's why we had the 30 point, uh, 30, 36.5% interest and also like the high dividends and everything. You know, obviously dividends are only driven by transforms at this time, but in future, they're going to be driven by like a wealth and like potentially infinite, 
like an infinitive DAP ecosystem. So yeah. we can add as many DAPs to the ecosystem after like V3 is launched or even should have been after V2 was launched. We can add as many DAPs as what people come up with. You know, there, yeah. there's no end to what can be added to that ecosystem. And every single one of them DAPs can feed hexi holders who freeze. That that That's always been the main goal. Uh, so, we, and, so, and, and then so then with the Freeman now, that's been turned off, correct? Right, right now? Correct, but when we launch this V point uh, V one point one, we can uh -huh. turn that back on. So at the end of the day, free mint now, um, free free mint now. Where whereas before, like so, basically the way the way that free mint and mobile app works is when when you like self refer through hex, you get thirty percent. So the way the way mobile generates a revenue is that twenty percent of that is paid kind of for the use of the app. So, you know, we've heard some comments of people saying, oh, you weren't open about this. And, you know, you haven't told people about this. We have, we've been open about it from the beginning. So people still get a 10% referral bonus from using that. But at the same time, the 20% extra is what pays for the mobile app. But at the end of the day, 90% of that 20% is gonna be getting fed to Hexi holders who freeze. Only 10% will go to the team. So at the end of the day, mobile is like a different team than what Hexi, what Hexi is, like Hex Money started as. Uh -huh. So at the end of the day, that, that, that will stay. But at the same time, them, them divs, if, if the same thing happened, like we, we put over a thousand ETH uh, through, we, we was only running with Hex Mobile for like just over a week or whatever. And mm -hmm. at the peak, we put through over a thousand ETH in one day. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and, and actually, I think I saw that chart that that Firebond made, right? And there's like that you can see yeah, that, yeah, that, that's, that's yeah. it. And, you know, people will say, "No, oh, you think you're like good and all that," but the thing is, what people need to realize is that was for just over a week. Once, you know, uh, uh, one, one second, uh, your your audio is coming a little fuzzy. I don't know if you did something different there. Nope. Can you hear me now? Um, it's it's coming in fuzzy. Let me let me try to maybe mute you and read. Uh, all right, go ahead. Uh, talk now. Yeah, is that any better? I can hear you, but it's like it's like pretty. Uh, it's kind of it's like fuzzy. I don't know what happened there. Um, How's that now? It, it's it's still kind of it's like really maybe if you try to leave and then come back in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Try that. Or. Er. All right, a little bit of audio issues here. Let's see if we can get this fixed. And what's going on, Brennan? Tin foil hat will increase reception. Bitcoin for life, what's going on? Crypto Sandman. T. Dennis. Uh, crypto Girl. Max 10KX. Roger Lee, Green Thumb. Here we go. Let's see if this works now. All right. Mm. Hello. Is that any better? Hello. I think that's better. You're more clear now. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 That's that's better. That's better. Cool. Where we're at. Yeah, I think we we're talking about the uh, mobile when Firebun made that the image that showed kind of how we helped go into the all-time high. Yeah, so so with with that image, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, that's that's not a lot." So we 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 basically contributed around about five to six percent that day of the overall ETH that went into the AA lobby. Um, but what 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 people need to realize is the AA lobby at, up to that point, I think, had been running for just under two hundred days um or around about there so mm -hmm. at the end of the day we had been running for like five or six days so this is the yeah. impact we had at running at five to six days so when we launch like v1.1 we're going to potentially have like over four months of this effect with hex so obviously the main the, the main objective of like hex money and hex dot business was to assist hex and the main way we was doing that was by feeding ETH through the AA lobby and onboarding users. 
Mm-hmm. And even though um, like the 20% extra referral bonus was going to Hex, the, the Hex mobile app, we were kind of reimbursing people with Hexi. And, you know, that it, it, it was working because that Hexi was, I think, overvalued of the amount. Because when we first launched, we were giving away the same amount of Hexi as what people were putting in as ETH. So that yeah. 20% that people were moaning about was actually 5 x so at the same time, it was the, the equivalent value to the ETH they were putting through Hex Mobile. Mm-hmm. Um, so nobody was actually losing anything. And what it was actually creating is people were creating this cycle where they could just compound this amount of Hex and ETH uh-huh. you know, together. So they put ETH in, get Hex out the other side. And then, then I, f- I think the problem what they, they were doing is they were selling the Hex back to ETH and then going back through the lobby again. But they mm-hmm. weren't just doing that. They were also selling the Hexy and turning yeah. it back into ETH. So they just had a much bigger ball of ETH to stick through the AA lobby and just kept repeating the process. This is why we had to turn the first like free mint off because it was just too much of a compounding machine. And yeah. it was kind of causing this disparity between a Uniswap price huh. um, and also the transform price. So there was less incentive for people to transform. Yeah. So, you know, we, we've put them measures in place now. And then what we've also done is we've up the dividends, uh, which I believe used to be uh, 10% that was going to Hexi holders who freeze. Them dividends are now 90% from mobile that go to Hexi holders who freeze. So uh-huh. that 20% is basically going to people who have bought into Hex money with Hex. Um, it, you know, it's, it's basically going to them. So 90% of that 20% now will be fed to Hexi holders who freeze. And most of them people who have bought Hexi have bought in with Hex. So no, if, if any of the Hex community want to say, oh, you're not, you, you know, you're not letting people know about this 20%. Well, it's going to people that are in Hex. You know, it's yeah. not going to anyone else. The team are only going to get a small split of that. And the mobile team are actually different from the whole of the Hex dot business team. Yeah. Yeah. And then so now also, so what's your thoughts on China? Um, and there's a question here from Max 10 KX talking about <laughs> kind of, uh, the mobile app into China. Like, is that active yet? Is China on some we, different we, kind of different laws or anything? Um, what, uh, what, what's we, your thoughts we, kind we, of with China? The whole, the whole mobile app has been set up to um, incentivize our uh, China. So we, we have a couple of Chinese people on the team and they've done a great job at like translating the Hexdot business website uh, and also the Chinese app. So the, so, so the app is available in English and Chinese and there's many more languages coming. Um, and even after the AA, that will still like roll over because we can still add all them. All, all, all them language languages will be added because what we want to do with the mobile app after the AA ends in like just over four months or however long it is, mm. uh, we, we want to basically like incentivize people to use the Hexdot business ecosystem. So the more languages we add, the better that will be. Yeah. Okay. And, and then so now once once the, the, the Hex adoption amplifier lobby, once that ends, so uh, what's Hexes or what's like the Hex mobile apps plan to kind of incentivize uh, like after that ends, like, is there any kind of maybe like referral program that you guys are kind of thinking about or something to kind of like incentive? Because I'm sure people will still be, once that ends, you know, the people who, who, are, who are like promoting Hex, they're going to be looking for something else to like to refer with Hex. So, you know, yeah, what's, cool. what's kind of, what, what's your plan mm-hmm. that like once once the, the, AA, the AA ends? So, so the mobile app will still be able to be used as a staking tool for Hex. You'll be able to do everything Hex related on the mobile app. You'll also be able to do everything Hexy related on the app. And then, like I say, with, with the Hexdot business ecosystem, the, 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 the one of the main goals was to make that purely mobile as well. Mm. So, so the, the Hex app now that is being used to onboard new users for Hex and, and also give Hexy in return for doing that, which is part of the incentive, hence why we're called an incentive token. Mm. But basically, what you're going to be able to do is just use that mobile app for the whole of the hex dot business ecosystem but also hex as well because there's still going to be there's still going to be hex staking after the aa lobby yeah so at the end of the day you're still going to be able to do everything hex related through the app and everything hex dot business related through the app gotcha gotcha and then there's a question here from brennan he says will daps be released with v3 or anytime sooner 
uh, that will be released with V1.1. So we will okay. aim to launch mobile immediately after V1.1 is launched. Uh, okay. what, like I say, one of our core values was basically to assist X. And mm -hmm. by taking this step backwards and moving back towards a V1.1, we can uh, continue with them core values and basically assist hex and mm. you know one of the main things that was assisting hex was this mobile free mint with hexi um and then basically driving adoption for hex users via mobile you know mobile's much more widespread than obviously desktop and lap laptops and you know mm. that that's what we're offering yeah. it's a simple tool to use um yeah. and, that, and that's what we're going to continue to do so so we we kind of kill two birds with one stone doing it this way we get to incentivize people to use the mobile app. They get free Hexi. We onboard new users for Hex. We drive ETH to the AA lobby, which assists Hex and potentially can help the price of Hex because the more ETH that seems to go through the AA lobby, then the more people seem to buy the price up on Uniswap. Now, that doesn't always happen, but most of the time it does. If the price is more expensive through the AA lobby, it seems to kind of not directly pump the price on Uniswap, but it, it causes more people to buy on Uniswap because the price is more expensive through the AA lobby. So we, we kind of get to do that, which is like part of Hex.Business's core values. And then we also get to create the V3 um, contract. Uh, the devs can go to work on that. They can get that solid. And hopefully this is, this is kind of like a scenario where we can make more people happier all at once. So mm -hmm. the community will hopefully be getting more divs um, because we'll be incentivizing transforms. And then also in the background, we'll be having a much more solid version of V3 made uh, yeah. which will support the whole of the surrounding DAP ecosystem. Yeah. And uh, is there any DAP that you think might come out first? I know I've seen some sneak some sneak peeks of like the, the hex bet kind of user interface. I don't know if yeah. there's any kind of DAPs that you would think might be coming out first or uh, well, better. we've got the lossless casino being made. The, 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 the order I think will personally happen will be like this. I believe e even with this V1.1, we will, V1.1 will probably consist mainly of um, hex money and hex mobile. So that, that's like the core value. Obviously, we'd like to release more dApps, but it might just be more beneficial to release more dApps with V3, which will probably okay. be around about seven to eight weeks away from now. Okay. And then also there's a question now, HXB transforms. I, I kind of saw something on the, us the user interface with Hexbet that you can transform it. And is there going to be any kind of like like pegged rate for HXB? or uh, we're, we're, we're taking the pegged rate straight from Uniswap. Okay. So whatever the price is on Uniswap, that's the price. But 50% of all transforms of HXB will go to Hexi holders who freeze. Okay. Okay. So it's another it's a, it's another dividend payment basically to Hexi holders who free. Hmm, okay, and, and then the HXB price is going to be pegged to the price on Uniswap for HXB, correct? Correct, correct. So it, it, it'll so that'll be like the same kind of um the same as with the HXY kind of fifty percent fifty percent and so, then so, pegged so to the Uniswap of, price, correct? So yeah, if we if we specifically say towards like V three one one of the disparities that we've seen with um trying to you know we we had this ascending um like you know the the, the rounds were 1000 jump straight to 2000 yeah. then we were moving to 3000 uh it uh -huh. seems to be there's a disparity there on uniswap so the one one of the things we've looked at is what if we just peg the price to uniswap price so the market just decides the value and then we give a 10% um, incentive for transforming, which will be the mm -hmm. referral bonus. Um, instead of doing 90% divs, because it doesn't give enough towards liquidity, we go to 50% divs, which, you know, we, we were working great at 25% divs with V1. So 50% mm -hmm. divs should, should work well as well. But then what yeah. we can also do is we can provide like 50% towards liquidity or have 50% for other things. Um, so potentially say 20% of that could be to buy on Uniswap. So if people are selling down or people are trying to get out, then we could potentially use a percentage of that to buy it back up. 
which will keep the you know keep the uni swap price from dumping depending mm -hmm. on what the transform ratio is but we will we can always make it that the transform ratio is better than the uni swap price so it will yeah. always be more beneficial to transform rather than buy on uni swap yeah so if you know if it's more beneficial to transform that should increase divs correct i mean it, 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 yeah it should yeah, incentivize more people that, to transform that's the idea. So. i mean obviously it's still zero expectations zero promises but mm -hmm. you know design wise it should do you know yeah. if people are still into hexia or whatever i mean we, we haven't exit scammed have we we're still here we're still trying to you yeah. know put things right and make things work and you know that's what we're going to continue to do until they yeah. do work and, and then now crypto sandman says uh when you get a chance can you ask lotto to touch on H hxp and its functionality mm, I, I, hxp is a project um there, there were a lot of people putting scam tokens out there they knew what projects we were going to do mm -hmm. uh, and we basically tried to launch a token like on the sly without people knowing but just so we had the token there mm -hmm. um and basically people picked up on it like the, the second we launched anything on uniswap people just picked up on it and they started yeah. buying it and everything there, and there's 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 a group and i'm i'm in it but i i don't even look because it's mostly just these junk scam coins mm. um and it's anytime a, a coin is listed on uniswap it, it it gives you like an alert or right here uniswap listings yeah. and and like and all day there's people making all these crazy things so there's people just watching um but the, the, the problem is is people knew what tokens we were going to launch so what they were doing to try and hurt the project is they were making their own version of that token listing it on uniswap coming into our group posing as either an admin or myself mm -hmm. and then actually putting the token contract address on on in the group and actually causing people to go and buy it and we we had like you know some of our core community members getting caught out by these mm, scams yeah i saw we that literally just put it there as a safety measure so people know this coin is there and it is gonna you know we are working on something to do it but it's just there so it's our it, it's our token because mm. a simple message to the community like don't buy this until the, the, the these people that come out to literally scam people they're too clever you know, and like I say, they're literally coming into your group and posing as like myself or one of the admins or something like that. And they're just they're, they're, they're causing your community to go and jump onto Uniswap without an official announcement and just spend an, all their reef on something that isn't even going to be part of anything to do with our ecosystem. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and, yeah, and, 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 and even even there. even when HXB was released, I saw the price and it just it like instantly just it just spiked. Mm. Yeah. I, I think some of some of the Uniswap snipers, they just they found it and then it's just phew, Yeah, that's like, it. Oh, and, and because they related it to our project, it's like that that was, you know, even more. But but like literally when when we added liquidity to like HXB, there, mm -hmm. there, yeah. there wasn't even enough time for someone else to add liquidity before mm -hmm. people had jumped in and started buying it. Yeah, it's like amazing that was how crazy. It was literally like a few seconds and people had just jumped in and are swooping it up. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that was a crazy one. Um, let's see here. There's an reverse hex when transforming ETH to going back at, to V1.1. Best news I've heard. It. Yeah, it seems I I think that's a good decision going back to to V1. Um, that'll kind of incentivize divs and and also from everything I kind of saw from before. Even though I got in late, you know, a lot of people were were super happy with V1. It seemed like you know that the divs were paying out well, and I think also that was only 25 percent <clears throat> div rate so this you know there should be more and and i think that should kind of help um you know it should incentivize people to use to transform because the price will be pegged on like to the price on uniswap so i i think that's good yeah that's it there's always going to be that 10 percent extra you can get through transforming now um, are, the, are those 10 percent going to be uh 30 day frozen automatic freeze even longer to be fair so there's there's a lot of big changes coming with v3 and there's a lot of things we've had to take into consideration um but you know for people who believe in the project we're, we're going to kind of try and create our own big payday with v3 where oh. ev every single free hexi will be locked in the contract for the duration of until max supply is depleted um, and then what that will mean is this should help the price because the last thing we want is people earning free hexi and then just dumping it on the market. 
Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, if we want to really incentivize transforms and, you know, not just that, but when we add all the, all the surrounding dApps as well, if we really want them to have a major impact, then they're not going to have a major impact if people have an abundance of free Hexi that they can dump. Because people need to take into consideration 50% of Hexi is free. So literally 50% of the whole supply. So why should we allow people to take something that is effectively free and hurt a project with it? You know, why, why should we do that? So what, what we're looking at doing with V3 is potentially locking all that Hexi up. It will still earn dividends. Free Hexi won't earn interest. So any transformed Hexi will earn interest and dividends or any any Hexi bought off Uniswap will earn uh, transforms and uh, sorry not transforms dividends and interest but all the free hexi will, will always earn dividends but it won't earn interest and then it will be locked until the max supply of hexi is done so in other words the incentive is is to earn dividends from that from that free hexi so so just uh so uh, so again really quick then so what part will be locked until until max supply is hit all free hexi, all free hex, and then all the free hexi will be the the, the free minted from he- from hex mobile. Free minted referrals, interest, and yeah, free minted referrals and interest. Okay, but now will those accrue interest as they're frozen, or uh, no? the, the free hexi won't occur interest, but it will pay dividends. Okay, so okay. then dividends will come from a wealth of surrounding debts, any transforms that happen. Um, and the idea is, is that we get, um, we max the supply out. We kind of want to max the supply out of Hexi. And that, but uh, now I, I saw somewhere at that, I think Passive Crypto Show posted it, that the max supply for the interest of Hexi is 18 million. Is, is that correct there? That, or, or something uh, or something I saw that it was like the max, that it's like the interest whenever you're frozen. It's Yeah, so I, I think Transforms is around about 27 million. Okay. Um, and then the rest of the supply, everything else can come out of that. Okay. So 27 million is the transform out. And then anything else of that would be like the free minted and kind of bonus Correct. things and stuff like that. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it was like 48 million and then minus that would be the transforms. But it's, yeah. So, but, but basically, like I say, half of the, half of the hexi like of the max supply is free. So yeah. originally the team had like 12 million, it left 48 million. Yeah. Um, and then there's from that 48 million, there was 27 million minus whatever is already circulating would have left 18 million for the free mint, for the interest and referrals. So basically them three things would come out of that 18 million. So then now what's your kind of like projection or estimation on when that the, the, the total uh, supply should be kind of be hit ish like because be maxed out it yeah. all depends i think on the surrounding ecosystem and what dApps we bring out to feed and incentivize like transforms and um you know transforms and dividends so uh-huh. the better the dividends will be the the less people will sell yeah but so, we, could, we could kind of create like if, if if we lock all the free hexi until the max supply is minted one, it means there's going to be less that's going to have to be transformed for the max supply to be reached. And then, and then two, the, you know, we, we, we will like kind of create our own big payday, but with Hexi. So to create your own big payday, but with Hexi, so that will be kind of, but and that will be taken out of the, the extra supply, the extra supply, correct? Yeah, all, 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 all the free minted Hexi. So and, and okay. anything in Hexi that is free minted, which is free minted referrals or interest, because that's uh-huh. all free Hexi, ba- basically that will just um, be locked in the, in the contract until mm-hmm. until the max supply is reached. And then once max supply is reached, everybody who's got their locked Hexi, that will just be released. Okay. And the max supply is 60 million, correct? Correct. And then, and then once that happens, basically, we will find the true market value of Hexi. Okay. And we're currently at, I think, what's it? 14.4, 14.9 million, I believe, is the total supply yeah, you, currently. You, you, you've, have. Got like, you've got a team supply in that. So there's 6 million locked. So th- this is all going to change as well. Like okay. I say, in, in V1 
in V1.1, the team will own zero hexi at all. We okay. will own zero hexi and earn zero participation. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. And so then, so then now, what's like the estimation on when you think kind of V1, V1.1 should kind of be ready to to roll? I, I know it, it's hard to make estimations because it's yeah. like, you know. I, I, I'm you, not even going to give an estimate. Okay, it yeah, shouldn't be, yeah. It shouldn't be that long at all because we've okay. already got the code. We, yeah. we already got the code for V1. So it's already done. Um, so it's, it's it's literally just, you know, it's, it's, it's literally about making a few tweaks and getting the UI sorted for it and then it, and it's good to go. Yeah, okay. And then now, so how would you peg the, how would you peg the transform rate to Uniswap? But is there kind of like a, some, you have to pull like the kind of the, the API or kind of yeah, data or something? Yeah, exactly that basically. Huh, interesting, okay. But then, yeah, so if it's always pooling it or if it's always pe like pegged, that it it should be it should incentivize it to always use the transform because you'll be getting that that extra ten percent correct exactly exactly but that. but that ten percent like you just said now that will be frozen until the max supply is hit correct? correct but it will earn dividends okay but it'll earn dividends okay gotcha 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 and that's to kind of help kind of support the price to avoid people from kind of taking advantage and then just dumping their hexi correct. The free minted hexi. The free, the, the, the free minted hexi. That's what can damage the price is the free minted hexi. So we've been trying to put like measures in place to like resolve resolve these problems basically. But if somebody buys on Uniswap or, or if they trans, they can still the portion that's not free minted, that free portion they could sell if they want to. Correct. Correct. That, that portion. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Any okay. transforms can be. Yeah. So gotcha, tran gotcha. normal transforms will just go into the same, um, like the seven day freeze or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and like, then like, like, all, all, all these problems, we would, you know, it's not saying we can run through uh, like a test or a calculation. We can we can do like um, simulations of them and that, but mm -hmm. until you put them out into like the actual real world and put them into use, you can never know what the results will be. And yeah. like I say, everything we've done from the beginning is build all the strengths into where we saw the weaknesses would be, and it just wasn't good enough. So at the end of the day, all we can do is just keep putting these solutions into place until yeah. it finally gives and people can see like, okay, we're, we're not going to be able to do this, but, you know, if we own this amount of hexi, potentially, if the transforms are more incentivized than buying off of Uniswap, then, you know, potentially the divs are going to be much better. So yeah. at the end of the day, and they're going to be at a better rate. So we're we, we just having to switch things up and keep moving and keep adapting until yes. we get the right, the right recipe, basically. Definitely, definitely. And then there's a question here from Max10KX. What's the plan for Hex Pool? Will all the pools be filled before Big Payday using V3? Can bonuses interest be fed into pools? Mm, well, we're going to incentivize the pools with free minting of Hexi. So at the end of the day, the, uh, the new Hex Pool has actually already had work done on it. Salamander's been doing that in the background as well. And the new... The, the new thing that the pool will do, what it doesn't at the moment, is it will just um, it will incentivize people by generating a free mint of hexi for people who enter that pool. So we can't say that every pool will be filled, but all we can say is come v free when when the pool is turned on, you will just be able to mint free hexi. Okay, okay, and then let's see. Uh, Mark Williams says, "Are we keeping the can new?" Can I just say something about hex pool as well on the show? A lot of people have been getting us mixed up with hexpool.xyz. I know uh -huh. that on, and you know they are an outright scam. And Salamander has actually picked their code to pieces and put that in the Hex Dev Chat. So we are not Hexpool uh, X Y Z. We are Hexpool.win. So okay, so okay, and I, I, I think I saw, I think I saw, if you want, I saw Richard Hart tweet that out too. I believe there was an yeah, issue yeah, with that. Yeah, he told everyone, but but what a lot of the fudsters are doing at the minute is they're trying Hexpool. to say our hexpool.win, which was out far before. That that's the real hexpool there. So so one of our devs made this. He's a talented hexpool.win. Well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I think I saw he, he, he 
he made this one a while back, I think, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been about for ages, and this scam come out and just tried to nick all the people. The 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 like uh, the irony of it is, if everybody had have actually gone and used the proper hex pool, they would have probably filled up multiple hundred and fifty million pools by now. Man, so and then and then the incentive or the bonus for using the the bigger pays better, is it? What's the what's the the percentage? Because uh, I I know longer pays better pays more, but um, bigger pays better. Let's see. I forget how much, like the exact percentage extra yeah, I don't that know it is. What the exact percentage is I'm not sure. It pays better, but I do know it's obviously better. Yeah, yeah. So okay, and then there was another. Let's see here. I had a question. Oh, Mark Williams asked, "Are we keeping the same website for V1.1?" Yeah. yeah. So yeah. We're, we're, the, the website we've got now, we're just going to be adapting so the stats match up on Hex Money, and everything okay. else will stay the same. Yeah, and I think let me see. I think I had this pulled up here. Let me go to X dot business and one thing now i don't know if, if this so when i click here our projects is there supposed to be like a drop down yeah, menu there, there, there was actually a drop down but there's been multiple updates in the last okay few gotcha days. gotcha uh, yeah that's that's right but uh, i think down here if you go down you can kind of still get to everything mm. you know the heck the hex credit hex credit user interface sneak peek um yep. i think heather's hex bet is on here that's this is new yep. I think even if I click that, I believe yeah, it takes me to, to, the, to the UI. I think it's actually functional to lock your HXB up. With in here, okay, gotcha. But then, and then now, will transforms be pegged uh, in here to transform HXB then? Uh, so, sorry, transforms. So, be, be, because uh, earlier you said now that 50% that of the transforms to HXB, it'll be like the same. Yeah, um, so, so anybody who transforms to HXB... Um, and I think you're going to be able to transform from ETH, USDC, and HEX. That will basically be sent to HEXI holders who freeze. So okay. as a dividend. So okay. all our ecosystem is basically going to feed back to HEXI holders who freeze. That's the idea, that every single dap in the ecosystem is going to feed HEXI holders who freeze. This is why we believe over time we will become one of the most dominant tokens in the industry, because we're an incentive token that we can add an effect in infinite amount of dApps to to feed that specific um you know that that specific part of the ecosystem mm -hmm. yeah and and then now uh hxb um I, that pays apy 15 percent, correct uh sorry hxb hx yes I, yeah, uh, I think it's 14, yeah. then something like that 14, 14 yeah and, and i think hxy pays 36.5 and I, I posted a picture before yeah, the, the, the new v2 actually pays more i think it pays around about 43 percent with compounding yeah yeah that's the i posted the picture if you do if you weekly compound i think it comes out to like 44 percent yeah that, that's, so, that's correct that's yeah 36.5 percent weekly compound it's a it's a earned an yeah. earned annual rate of a 44 percent so i 15 and, and, and people still argue how can you do this like that's a scam no it's not if it's coming out of an a, a finite supply uh -huh. so it's you, you know it, it's just back to that point that once the once the finite supply of hexi is minted that's it it's gone you know and, and the way we will, the, the way we will, we will then support like hexi holders who freeze is via all the other dats in the ecosystem Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and people people forget like these daps we, we can just keep adding daps there's no problem with that you know as soon as that v3 contract is solid mm -hmm. and we know that you know a, a, as soon as we know that a couple of daps are working correctly we know that we can add as many daps to that ecosystem and they're all going to function the same yeah and then now brennan asks will divs that are coming in from locked free minted hexi what is it until big payday be claimable daily. Well, yeah. that are coming in from locked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so divs, divs will just work in the same way. So, you know, we, any, anybody will be able to claim their divs daily. Like, say, say V3, they will. Uh, obviously, we've already stated that if we go to V1.1, that's going to have to be done in a centralized manner. Okay. The same as V1 was. Yeah. And then now, once all of the, the supply gets used up, then it'll just be the payments that you will get will be from dividends, correct? Right. And then it'll just be like a tradable token. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, th th this is what I'm saying. When that happens, we will find a true market value. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, 
while, while the dividends are coming in, I think we've maintained over ninety percent, like frozen. I, I, I think most of the time we we're actually at about ninety eight point five percent frozen out mm -hmm. of the circulating supply. I'm not too sure what the exact figures are right at this moment in time, but there's probably a little bit more circulating with people trying to sell um, and get out or whatever. But <clears throat> at the same time, with with that ratio, if if we kind of look at that ratio and say, well. You know the, the the max supply is 60 million well mm. come 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 the time that the max supply is actually maxed out then mm. we will we'll find a true market value because you're going to have the people that are trying to sell and then you're going to have the people that are trying to stay in to get the dividends and i suppose everything will be based on how good of an ecosystem we've put out there mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then now there's a question here from shane now he says, how will HXB be used within the lossless casino in V3? And how do you mint Hexi with HXB using this? Um, so basically anybody who owns Hex, ETH, USDC, um, or Hexi will be able to go and free claim HXB. And that will be that will be worked on as a similar sort of scenario as like the free mint. So you will get 10% of whatever you own. So if you can go and prove you own any of them for four lots of currencies, you will be rewarded 10% um, in HXB. Then what will happen is you can go and take that HXB to the lossless casino and you can kind of mine like Hexi with it. Now, you will not lose that HXB. It will be returned on all losing bets. So the HXB that you start with will be the HXB that you finish with. But the way you will... The way you will mine more Hexi is by owning a bigger, a bigger portion of HXB. So this is why it might be more beneficial now to be scooping it up, basically. Gotcha. And like I say, if you go through transforms and scoop it up, you're also going to be feeding dividends into Hexi holders. Yeah. Free. And, and then so so say if you start using your HXB, is there is there like any kind of time limit as to when you could reuse your tokens after you're done playing each game? Or... Yeah, there, there, there's going to have to be some thresholds put in place. But it will okay. more than likely be that there will be a daily threshold of Hexi that can be mined per day or, or one per day. And then basically the people who have the bigger amounts of HXB will be able to win more of that daily threshold allowance of HXY. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. And let's see here. HXB will also could potentially have even more use cases further down the line. So, you know, HXB will obviously have some kind of value because it's on Uniswap, which mm -hmm. then we could say, well, we could bring another casino into play further down the line that isn't a lossless casino. So then it could be used as an actual currency in a in another casino. Huh. And then now I saw some sneak peeks too. Uh, so the games will consist of, I, I saw... It was there a dice game, or um, I thought I saw I saw um, slots. What else did yeah. I see? Um, they're, they're, they're the three games that are coming out with the Lossless Casino. The front end's already worked on and done. It just uh -huh. needs the back end connected to them. Obviously, our devs are going to be busy at the moment sorting this V three contract out. Yeah, yeah. Huh, okay, okay. And let's see if I have any questions. See what we. Tripod says, "Will we still have to claim our own divs daily?" Uh, v1.1, no, they will be airdropped. Nice. Yeah, yeah, my, my last three days, because I, I got into V1 like the last last few days, and it was pretty nice. And But, of course, at that time, that was when like the FOMO, there were, you know, the, the, that was like the big FOMO wave leading into V2, so that the divs were really high at that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I've, I've, I think a lot of people just automatically compared V2 to that and didn't really get like the climax of what they were getting in v1 mm -hmm. um and then basically you know there, there, there's a lot of stuff that has happened since then we've we've fought an endless amount of fud um and then obviously we've had these technical glitches come up which we're obviously doing everything we can to resolve um mm -hmm. and we're still here you know we haven't exit scammed we haven't done anything you know that people have said we're gonna do Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're just going to make this. We're just going to make this thing work. It will be the last thing we ever do. But at the same time, we we, we know what we're onto here. We're not onto. Yeah. We're not onto like a, 
a, a five week pump and dump scheme. It's, it's mm -hmm. completely different. We're yeah. on to a whole ecosystem of, you know, a, a currency that is based on a whole ecosystem, something that has like infinite possibilities and like an infinite supply of dApps that can be added. And mm -hmm. that, that, that in cryptocurrency, that's something big, you know, and it's not just that we do have a solid community. You know, there, there's a lot of people that could have turned their back on us by now. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe the reason a lot of people haven't, there's a lot of people that are in profit. You know, I, I know there's people selling out with the dump and everything, but nobody is forcing them to do that. If they just had some patience, they would probably see like some, some uh, you know, they would probably see a bigger picture. But a lot of people just can't help themselves. And I get it. I get why people do it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. People just need to keep that mentality. And it's like, you know, what we're, what we're trying to actually achieve here isn't easy. It's never good. It was never going to be easy. And at the, at the end of the day, there was always going to be glitches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And then, and Brennan, Brennan says here for uh, V1.1, are divs coming in only hex or in all four as in V2? Uh, we will revert back to just hex. Hex. Okay. Okay. And, and, then, and, and, and that, that aligns uh, more in line with our core our core values from v1 yeah and, and then so to transform for in v1.1 the only option will be in hex correct i believe so yeah i mean I'll, I'll double check that with the dev um he might he might be incorporating all things but i you know i can't give 100 percent clarity on that at the moment okay okay because i guess the other option would be if they were then they'd have to be kind of converted back into hex or yeah like you know like yeah, you said it, you it, have to see what... this is this is it because yeah it's, it's going to be easier just to airdrop hex. Yeah, and then I think we touched on. Did we touch on this? Will there be, will there be auto claim and help for yeah, small fish? That that that's actually already being implemented into um into the contract. So what what I think we'll offer is basically a button that anybody in the community can press, mm -hmm. um, and what that will do is it will send a batch of um it will send a batch of dividends out. So there will obviously be a substantial gas fee for that, but it will mean that, say, for instance, you know, there's an hour or whatever till divs need to be claimed or a couple of hours, and there's a few hundred people that haven't managed to claim because the the, the gas outperforms what their div ratio is. Well, anybody in the community will be, be able to press that button, and that will just send out, like, an automatic batch of divs. I, th okay. I think it will be running, like, batches of 100 according to the divs. Okay. It will solve that issue for the smaller fish. Yeah. Okay. And then, and uh, one more question too. It, um. So with V three, is it still going to be that the trend? Are are there still going to be rounds? Is is it still going to be like two thousand? No, no, no. The rounds will be completely eliminated, and we okay. will be pegged to the uni swap price. Gotcha. So okay. I, I believe this is the best way forward. That the market predicts the price, and then we can always incentivize transforms more with another ten percent. Then we can. They're, they're, a lot of people don't realise there's a lot of other things we can do where we can incentivise liquidity providing as well. Where mm -hmm. liquid, liquidity providing, we can um, like outperform the interest rate to the liquidity providers as what the contract gives. Okay. Yeah. And and, and I believe I saw the group. There's there's a group, right? Correct for that already. Yeah, that, that's right. That's already set up and it's working. I think they're quite enjoying that. There was a little punt tonight when we put an announcement out. It wasn't anything major and it's like gone back down, but you yeah, know, there was a little pump in that group. So the liquidity providers would have, you know, benefited from that basically. Yeah. They yeah, not I think only, I, they I not think only I, their, yeah, they they get a share of like the uniswap divs. Uh, sorry, not the divs, but the fees. And then they also get like you, you know, whatever the differences they make in Hexi or ETH. I think I saw it was ten percent for one month, correct? And then was it like twenty? Yeah percent or 22 percent for two months two months, two months, and months. 10 for one month yeah and okay that's how been hexy yeah but yeah and then also, it, they also if get anyone's money. interested let me just pull up that thing and I, I believe i have that here if anyone's interested that is t.me slash hexy uniswap so that that's the group if anybody's interested and i think brennan has a spreadsheet that he's kind of been helping out with that, I believe. Yeah. So that's that group there for anybody interested. Um, and then let's, and now Shane says, how will lending credit contribute to Hexi holders? And tell us a bit about Tangem and V3 and how it's intended to work with mobile slash credit. 
Uh, so Tangem is just basically uh, like a hardware wallet that stores your crypto. So it will be designed to actually store Hexi uh, and Hex. So potentially it's just like we, we try to make like the mobile uh, like just like a streamless, um, you, know, you, you know, so basically we, we just want everything to be able to be done in a streamlined fashion. So you can like do a couple of taps and buy your Hexi. You can do another couple of taps and store your Hexi or your Hex, you know, and just make everything streamlined throughout the process and just make the onboarding easy for, you know, newcomers and simple, you know, because that, when you actually try and do everything through desktop, it's, a, it's actually not that easy uh, for newcomers, whereas through mobile, things are, seem to be a hell of a lot easier. And that, that, that's what we wanted to do is just streamline that process right away throughout the mobile the mobile process and just make everything really simple and safe. So the tandem card just stores their hex or hexi. And it's like, once it's stored, they know it's offline and it's safe and no one's going to get it. Um, yeah. It just makes everything much better. So that that's, that's essentially like a hardware wallet, correct? Kind correct. Of? Yeah. That's exactly what it is. But then that uses the, I forget what the term is for that chip. And then yeah, you can kind of just yeah, like, chip. I can't remember the, the, the three letters of the chip, but there's a chip and basically you can just tap that on your phone and take your cryptocurrency out of your mobile, like out of your actual mobile phone, and it will store it directly onto the hardware wallet. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's actually a pretty sick technology. Yeah. And I, I did take a look at uh, Tangem's website, and it seems like, you know, it seems like they're kind of, they got their, their stuff going on here. I was kind of trying to read it, but oh, NFC chip is what it's called. NFC, that's the one. Yeah. 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 And I, I've heard of that before, and there's been some other projects trying to like um, use that technology. Um, so, uh, yeah, near field communication, NFC. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So let's see, Dennis, I see Dennis, uh, in the telegram a lot. Um, no way a lot of, we, we believe in this project and the big pitch, big picture is massive. So I, th I think there's a lot of like decent community members who do believe in what we're doing. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's, it's difficult to do what we're doing and the FUD just be there all the time. It's like a kind of like, we, we obviously haven't experienced it half as much as what Richard Hart had to put up with. But it's like, it does it does make things more difficult. But it also acts as like a bit more fuel to the fire to make you more determined to succeed and prove people wrong. And I feel like we're kind of in this stage at the minute because the, the, the worst FUD we was getting was from um, like the RG3 show and Good Texture. Mm -hmm. And it's like, right as he come on, it was like this bug become apparent. So it made it even worse. And yeah. the, the, the first thing I'd done was actually like, once I announced to the community, I actually went on and just posted it straight in his group and said, here, here's some more FUD for your fire, you know, basically just yeah. it, do what you got to do with it. Just to show that, look, you know, think shit happens. You know, yeah. shit happens, but we're still here. We're still we're still doing what we've got to do, and we're going to achieve it. It's as simple mm -hmm. as that. No, no one's going to stop us achieving what we've mm -hmm. what we've set out to achieve. Our team, our team is strong. Everything we're doing is strong. The project's strong. You know, we've got a decent community behind us, and we're, we're just going to keep going until we, you know, get to where we need to be. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, anytime I'm in Telegram, I always see a lot of people. They're always in the same people. They're working hard, moderating, writing stuff, good, good messages, strong support. Dennis, who else? Uh, Brandon, I see uh, Brandon, Max, 10KX. Who else is in there? Um, I, I've been seeing Shane in there. Um, I, you know, there's, there's, there, there's a lot of uh, crypto girl. She's always in there. Who? Um, Octavio, Octavio, I see him in there a yeah. lot. Um, there, you know, there's there's so many people that they're putting in their time, their energy, their effort, and just trying to help people out, answer questions, kind of, you know. So I, that, that's that, that's always that's always good to see. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, mm -hmm. like like I say, there's a lot of like loyal people in that in that community, and yeah, you know, every everybody in that community who sees the bigger picture is out for each other. They're not out for themselves. So at the end of the day, I, I, I believe we can go from, you know, like a weakness to a strength with this. And it's mm -hmm. like, it will, it, it, all, all like the fruits of our labor will pay off eventually. And it's like, it's just like, you know, it's a big project that we've tried to take on, you know, and, and the fundamentals of the core like contract, there's just, it, it's, it's a lot that needs to be done. You know, mm -hmm. even like the testing wise, it's like you think something's done and it's just not. So we've, yeah. we've got to keep going and get everything right. And like I say, 
you know, we're, we're in a position at the moment where we've got to take a step back to be able to take a step forward. And that's what we're going to yeah. do. Um, but that should give more time for the, the, the core devs working on V3 to get everything in into shape and, you know, get, get that major contract of V3 launched where we, we don't have to have any interaction with it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good call going to the V1.1 and I think pegging the price to Uniswap and that'll really incentivize people to use the transforms and essentially create more divs. And that, that and that could really create like a snowball effect and just people it blows up and in crypto people are very very impatient and you know if there if there's not divs coming in per day they're they're going to move on to other projects and that that's that's just 100%. how that's how crypto people are and you got to have that you know you got to have those divs coming in the passive stuff and if there's if there's like zero days consistently that's really going to get a lot of people kind yeah. of you know shaken out so I think that's a good move going to the the V1.1 definitely mate definitely. Hmm. So, and uh, shout out to David Esquivel. <laughs> What's going on, man? Hex bro. Uh, Despita to Hefe. If you guys haven't seen that, he does the Hex Spanish channel. Definitely give him a follow. I was on one of his streams. Um, so definitely check out his stuff there. And let's see. That's it for the question. Is there anything you want to kind of like uh, highlight or touch on, Lotto? I don't know how much time you have to talk or um, anything. Or... No, not, not really. Just like, you know. At the end of the day, we're still here in the background. We're, we're doing everything. We've got things going on. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, ev everything will be done in due course, you know. Like, mm -hmm. all, all we can do is keep going. And it's like, you yeah. know, even though we've got these couple of obstacles in the way, then they're, they're not going to stop the project. It's not like they're detrimental to the project. We're just going to mm -hmm. keep going until, until everything is running smoothly, you know. Mm -hmm. And at, like, like I say, as soon as we can start adding these depths, uh, these surrounding depths to the ecosystem, everything should run run more smoothly. And like I say, e even taking this step back to V1.1, and then moving forwards again, everything should just fall in line. And ho hopefully we hang on to the, like, you know, the core community who like, you know, we, we, we thoroughly appreciate the community that's been here from the start mm -hmm. because, you know, they, they made all this happen. So without them, it wouldn't have happened. And we, we obviously feel like we owe it to them, you know, and we, we, we've just got to keep going and, and, and make things happen. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree. What what what's your view on everything like from from yourself looking in? You're quite a level. Yeah, well, I, well, I, I think I think right now, you know, like I just said, with with the divs at zero, like I said, people are very impatient, and if there's yeah. if there's a lot of zero days in a row, there, you know, whether there's good stuff coming, you know, very soon or not, there people are going to move. They're going to sell their stuff. They're going to move on, and that's just how the crypto people are. They're very. They got to go to the next thing that's pumping, and that's just. So I, I, so I personally, you know, I think going to this V1.1, I think that, I think it's a good move. If we, if there can be some decent, some divs kind of, some divs generated daily, I think that'll kind of, that'll draw everybody kind of uh, keep their kind of, um, that'll kind of keep everybody like uh, happy and kind of, you know. So um, yeah, I, I think if there's, if there's a way, if this V1.1 is going to generate daily divs, I think that's, I think that that's, that's very good. So, cool. um, but, but yeah, but recently, you know, everything, the price action going down, um, and then, and then like the zero div, you know, that's, like I said, that people get, they get scared and then, you know, so yeah, that's, that's, it. Mm -hmm. that's and, it. And, and also like, like you said, you know, it's kind of bad timing with there's the FUD was, you know, I, I've been in a lot of crypto projects, like a ton and, uh, and like, to like, like, to like, 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 dude, I I've been in so many, and I've seen so many FUD campaigns. I've been through so much FUD, even with hex at the beginning tons of fud and I, and at that time I, I was just like i was like man i was like um i you know i was like wow i mean this fud's kind of strong for hex at the beginning but I, I was like yeah i've been through some fud campaigns before and stuff ah, this is nothing but this hexy fud like the hexy fud is uh, I, i've never i've honestly i've never seen anything it's the craziest fud i've ever seen it was like, on another level like like, so it, like it was like, actually on another level and you're like, like whoa like what's that even even for people who are, who have been through FUD campaigns and experience, it was the craziest, like really it, the most insane FUD I've ever seen. Mm. So that's that's my opinion on it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was definitely crazy. Yeah, like, like I say, all we all yeah. we can do is keep proving things with facts, and that's all we've been doing. We keep proving mm. everything with facts, and at the end of the day, like I say, we're still going to keep going. You know, it hasn't. It hasn't put us off. It hasn't stopped us doing what we're doing. We're still on the same path that we've always been on. And that's just yeah. to deliver to the community, even though it's taking a little bit longer than what it is. Yeah, yeah. And and, 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 and 
we're, yeah, we're and, scared. And, this is the main thing. People are keep shouting. I think people are more pissed off that we're not an exit scam. You know what I mean? It seems yeah, like all the that, yeah. like they're more wound up that we did come and deliver V2. And all right, I know there's a few bugs in there and there's a few glitches or whatever, but it seems like they're more pissed off that we delivered it than exit scamming. I think they just expected we were going to be yeah, an exit scam yeah. Yeah. and doing things, you know. And it, I, I think it genuinely pisses them off for some reason because the more they fud and the more they're wrong, the more they look stupid. So it's like the more we stay here and the more we keep pushing forwards, it's like we're just, you know, we're we're ruining their credibility rather than ours, even though yeah. we've got a few glitches and, you know, we've got to go back to the drawing board and take a step backwards before we move forwards. At the same time, they're, you know, we're ruining their credibility rather than ruining ours. As long as we fix what, what you know, what needs to be fixed, that's good. And as long as we aren't an exit scam, which we're not because we're still here, you know, then at the end of the day, you know, we're proving them wrong rather than, you know. Yeah, definitely. Wrong. Yeah, and, and I think it's a good vision. And initially, I, I really liked the Hex Mobile app when I was getting into that. And then when I looked into everything and I saw just kind of the whole vision of the team and everybody and just kind of how strong everybody's working and kind of how everyone's adapting to different things. And it's just all, it's it's just, it's, it's innovation along the way. It's just different things. You got to see things. You have to adapt to certain market conditions. And that's kind of the stuff that really drew me in. And my thing is, hey, you know, if people if people are afraid of it or don't want to buy Hexi, that's fine. Don't buy it. If you don't like it, just sell it. Just sell your Hexi and move on. That's you know, that's exactly. it. That's it. No, 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 nobody's even been like told to buy Hexi, you know. And and even if they were to buy it, you know, the way we have said is we we, we don't we don't like recommend anyone goes and puts all their Hex into Hexi. That's mm -hmm. that's not you know. We, we, we don't even recommend anyone to buy it or tell anyone to buy it. It's like, but if you do, like, just, just use it as, like, what it's meant to be. It's an incentive token. Use some of your spare change in hex, you know. Maybe if you've got, like, 80% of your hex staked and you've got 20% available, maybe use, like, 5% of that, you know. Just just to buy a bit of hex -E to, like, be on the, uh, you know, just so you've got a bit or whatever. But we're not yeah. telling people to do that. We're saying if you're going to. You know, then maybe just use a percentage of that spare chain checks. And and, that, and that's what this project has been about. But, you know, if people come up and just try and start buying loads of Hexi up and then they moan, you know, we've had people moaning because of the price dump. And it's like, well, the price dump is actually, you know, at, at this at this at this moment in time is what, like 60 percent, 70 percent down, which, OK, yeah. it's a fair point. But, you know, we started at. I believe about three dollars and something. So we're actually only like fifty percent down at the moment from that three dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, you know, this is crypto. This is another thing. Crypto is volatile. People yeah, need to crazy. understand that, you know. And it's like it is volatile. It's not always going to pump. There are no promises. There are like zero expectations. Um, but at the end of the day, if something's designed to do something, it doesn't mean it's always going to. Mm -hmm. You know. And at, at the same time, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's volatile. Like, do you yeah, own it's, research, it's, you know? it's, it's so volatile. And that's why I'm not I'm not telling people to buy anything. I'm telling them, hey, do your own research. And I'm not even recommending anything to anyone because, you know, I've told some people to buy Hexi and Hex. And, mm. when, and, and when both of them go down, the people who I told to buy it, they're like, hey, what's going on? I, I got to sell now. It, what's a, and it's like I can't control other people's emotions. Exactly. So it's like, you know, um. So yeah, that's I just recommend. Hey, do your own research, and if you want to get into something, just you know understand the risks and do your own research. Pretty much, yeah. I, I think that's the best one is do your own research. That you can't get better than that. And it's mm -hmm. like if people don't take that as advice, then you know at the end of the day, you, they they shouldn't be in crypto. You know, if you can't mm -hmm. handle a bit of volatility, you shouldn't be in crypto. It's yep. as simple as that. Because crypto is probably the most volatile thing out there. Oh, it's of, so of volatile. To be involved in. So if you can't handle a bit of volatility, do not get involved in crypto for a start. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, if, and, and if you don't do your own research, then you've probably only got yourself to blame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely don't go in with like your lifesaver. Don't go all in yeah, crazy yeah, heavy. And, and, and on anything like this, you know? Yeah, that's, yeah. You think like, you know, even crypto, you know, some people do go all in on crypto and they win and some people go all in and they lose everything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like, like I say, go in with what you can afford to lose. You yeah, know, definitely. Yeah, and that's how it should be looked. Yeah, at. and I always say to people, don't you don't want to go in with any number where you're you're not going to be able to sleep good at night. Exactly. Uh, you know, that's you know that if you do that, you're too heavy. Just takes take some off of that so you can relax a little bit. 
Yeah, exactly. You usually find it's like the, 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 the people who shout shout the most in the community are the small fish, you know. And it's like, you know, the whales seem to keep tight lipped about most things. And they just sit there and watch in silence. Whereas the the people who it really hurts are the people who might only have like 50 hexi, you know, but that 50 hexi is probably all they could afford. So it's like, you know, they, they seem to shout the most. And and this is why I was saying it's important, like with V2, what we obviously quickly realised was these gas fees that were outperforming dividend payments. Uh, we needed to put a solution in place for that. And, and, and like I say, V3 is coming with that solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, I, you know, again, I hate, I hate to do estimations and stuff like that, but if you had to do a super rough estimation, you'd say maybe seven to eight weeks ish, if, if, if you know, a very rough estimation for, for V3, if you had to. Yeah. It, it is probably around that, say two months. Yeah. Right? Okay. But hey, yeah, and I'm sure people won't be, they won't be complaining if there, if there's dividends coming in, like how they were in V1. I mean, everyone seemed really happy with that, with that one. And I've, I've even heard, seen some people's comments say, oh, you know, what happens at the, like the divs in V1? It's not like, this. so, you know, I, I think people should be happy if it has a similar, you know, performance to V1. Definitely. I, I, I think if we move back to that model and it works and, and pe I, I think people will be happy again. I think the, the, the dividend structure for that will work, you know. So ho ho hopefully with, with that price pegged to the Uniswap price and the 10% extra for referrals, um, it should just incentivize more transforms. And then, like I say, it gives more time for V3 to be worked on in the background. Um, and like I say, everything can be set in stone. We can do a lot more testing. We can have more thorough audits done. You know, we had three done on V2. Maybe we'll get six done on, mm -hmm. on V3, you know, just to, just to try and like up, up that security. Maybe we go to a more than one different, um, I mean, we had three different auditors work on V2. So mm -hmm. may, maybe this time with like, um, with, uh, V3, maybe we'll have, uh, you know, four or five different auditors competing against each other you know yeah. we, we still we, we also offered a bug bounty as well i don't know if you oh, yeah i saw yeah i saw that i saw that for for v2 you know? i remember yeah and, and and we offered good prices for bugs in that so, yeah i think it was it was what back. it was like 10 it was like 10 eth for a critical bug or something yeah, or? yeah that's it 10 eth for a critical bug i think 5 eth for a median and one i believe it was one for like a minor Mm -hmm. um, which at the end of the day, that went out to the whole of the community and the hex community. Yeah. So people could see we were doing the right things and 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 taking the right measures, uh, what we should do, you know. And again, we will do the same with V3. I think what we're going to do with V3, what we didn't do with uh, V2, is we're going to do a lot of community bug testing. So we will involve the community in the V3 bug testing. So hopefully we'll have like a big bug bounty for that as well where basically the whole community can test V3 before we even uh, like mm. before we even go to mainnet. Okay, yeah, because then there might cuz I know the one with the referral contract of how like where if you use someone's address or you use someone's referral and and then they, and then they couldn't claim their divs for that day, like yeah. some of those people could kind of find if you're kind of like actively testing it, I guess, right? In some kind of like yeah, testnet. That's, that's, that's it, exactly. Like I say that that could have actually been used as like a malicious as like a malicious attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you would essentially like kind of freeze or not let people claim their divs. Like you can use like well, that. Well, I, th I think the big, I mean, if you look at it like on, on like the scale of things, what people could have actually done is they could have like one person could have gone through the whole of like the address start, say starting at the top where it would have hurt the most. So they could have gone and hit the, the whale in the group uh -huh. and then just work their way down just from referring. And yeah. basically, they could have just referred their self with the minimal amount and stopped the divs being claimed, the whole amount of divs. So wow. it was, uh, and, 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 and this, this only become apparent after we launched uh, the referral bet. Yeah. So at the same time, in, in V2, you wouldn't have been able to see this. You could only see this with a referral bet being launched. Um, uh -huh. But the, the, the other thing is as well, with all the surrounding dApps, we do have like damage limitation we can put in place. So it's not like, say, for instance, there was a problem moving forward with the ecosystem. It's not like they'd ever be able to mint out the whole of Hexi because there'd be a threshold on that DAP. 
So at the end of the day, the worst scenario that could be that could happen is that daily threshold or whatever could be okay, gotcha. out. So this this is the other thing. There are like safety precautions in place to stop like uh, you know the worst from happening. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I think just hearing that news today, I think that sounds good. And I think if we go with that V one point one with the uh, transform rate pegged to Uniswap. I, you know, I, I think it sounds good. I think it sounds good. And if we can get some dividends coming in per day, that could kind of boost the morale of everybody. And I think, Definitely. you know, kind of, yeah. So I, I think, I think good. that's what's needed for the project at the minute is to boost the morale of the community. Uh-huh. And that, 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 that's exactly what we're doing. You know, we haven't, we, we didn't plan to go down this route. It's just yeah. something that's come up and yeah. we're thinking, oh, well, what can we do, you know? And, well, and, and, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to just kind of adapt as things are happening to you. You exactly. have to kind of, you have to assess the situation. And whose idea yeah. was it then to kind of just improvise and kind of? Yeah, um... I, I, I just thought of it and said, like, should we go back to V1? Like me, mm-hmm. me, me and uh, one of the devs had a joke the other day and we was like, oh, weren't V1 like, you know, better than this or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we've done is we, we, we sort of know how we want V3 to be. We know the functionalities. We know uh, the design we want of it. Um, but speaking to the, like the core devs who are like the new dev team that we brought on, like the professional uh, dev team moving forward, they've said like to even make this contract, the earliest it could be done would be like six weeks. Okay. Um, and it would be another two weeks for testing, which is why it'd be like eight weeks from now. Yeah. Um, and I just thought like, well, the community ain't going to sit tight for eight weeks. You know, yeah, no, yeah, they'll, they'll dump it down people. into like penny. They'll just, yeah, people, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's like, well, what can we do? We can just give them this fix. You know, let's just step back to V1. We've already got all the code there. We, you know, there's nothing's hardly even got to be adapted for it. It's just there sitting there waiting. Yes, mm-hmm. we will have to airdrop a new token. And then, yes, when V3 comes out, we'll have to do the same again. But at the same time, it is still a fix. You know, it might not be the best fix logistically for the contract and you know it's a bit of a not not a mess but it's a bit of a headache every time you like you have to airdrop a new token or whatever but yeah at the same time we can gather the data to pinpoint accuracy so there's no there's no problem with doing that airdrop because all the data is sitting on the holders list of v2 of the v2 contract okay Um, so we just take that data do the airdrop and, and then from there, people can, um, you know, like I say, we've got this V1 back up and running or V1.1, um, which will hopefully put people back in a good place. And, that, and that's what the intentions are at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I'm curious to see what the devs say about if, you know, if, you, if you'll be able to transform ETH, USDC and HEX or if, if it will only be HEX. But I guess if it's only HEX, then essentially that would kind of be good for Hex because then people would have to buy, you know, transform their ETH to Hex first, essentially kind of pumping the price of Hex, correct? Yeah, it, it, exactly. So at the end of the day, it, it kind of goes back to the core values of where we started from. So mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think it would be a major hindrance if people could only buy in. in yeah, Hex. yeah, I, I, don't, mm-hmm. I don't see that bad either. And, and it obviously goes back to the, it gives Hex a, a, another use case, which is what this whole ecosystem is, you know. Every single DAP in our ecosystem is gonna is gonna uh, use hex, and people are saying, "Oh yeah, but it doesn't use the hex. Um, it doesn't use like the core function of hex." Well, most of our DAPs actually do. So hex pool does, mm-hmm. uh, yep. hex live stake does, um, mm-hmm. and 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 even if uh, certain DAPs don't use the actual core function of hex, you know, this ecosystem was to accept hex. To give it to give hex more use cases so even just ex- accepting hex as a currency well that's good enough because it gives hex validity because someone's willing to accept it as a currency mm-hmm. you know so at the end of the day if you didn't believe in hex you certainly wouldn't accept it as a currency so just accepting hex is good enough as far as i'm concerned but people want you to use the core function of the hex contract and it's like well why if it's like you know bitcoin can be used as as a currency that's what you want things to be used as you want them to be able to be used in dapps yes it's 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 great if like your dapps do use the core function of like hex but hex credit also uses a core function of hex you know it stakes hex in the hex contract uh hex pool still uses like the bigger pays better pools uh Mm. hex stable will use uh the bigger pays better pools uh Hex Lotto Stake will use the bigger pays better pools. 
so all of our DAPs do actually use the core function of hex. But what I'm saying is all the DAPs that don't that just accept hex, well, that's just a bonus on top. And that does actually give more validity to hex. So mm -hmm. whether people like it or not, the more DAPs that accept hex and use hex, the better for hex. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then and then now also just to confirm the free mint in the mobile app that will yep. be that will be turned on with v 1.1 correct and correct. all all, yep. of, all of the extra the 10 percent uh free minted hexi will be frozen until the total supply is reached correct, correct. that's correct any any free mint any free hexi moving forward will be locked in that manner so it will uh, it will attract dividends um, but it won't attract interest. Only transformed hexi will attract interest. Okay, so and it won't it won't accrue any interest. No, but it will attract dividends. So it will accrue dividends as long as there's transforms and surrounding depths that provide dividends to the ecosystem. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so that that would incentivize more people to transform if you want to accrue interest. Correct. 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 But, but at the same time, they will also still earn dividends based on the amount of free hexi they've acquired. So it will still it will it will still earn people dividends, and it will still uh, gotcha. be attractive for them to earn that free hexi because gotcha. that free hexi will have a value. And then and then also, I mean, there's so many variables, and it's it's hard to kind of predict or project. But I think I asked you earlier, but I mean, if you were to kind of just I don't know a super broad estimation of when. Hexi might reach its max supply. I don't. I mean, would you say? Because it's. I mean, I don't know. Would you say maybe a year and a half, two years? Or I don't know. It, mm. It's it, it's hard to kind of. It's a difficult one to call. It's a difficult one to call. But I, I'm presuming that will be based on how many DApps we get out in that ecosystem. I think the more DApps that we get out into the ecosystem, the faster the rate. Yeah, exactly. Because because the higher that the dividends potentially can be. So it's all going to be based on what we can get them dividends to be. And and it's not just that, it's how well the other depths that are in that ecosystem are designed. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it's it's very hard to predict and you know, with so many very in crypto, it's you can't even predict tomorrow. Mm. Um, so it's you know, trying to hit you know that far in the field. But I think the most important thing is just kind of assess the situation uh, that we have currently, kind of you know, adapt to the market conditions and make make the the necessary changes, which I think with the you know this call going to the v1.1 i think the 50 percent liquidity 50 percent divs i think that's a good move i think it's a good move and i think people are generally happy with that um so i think i think this this, this could be good going forward definitely definitely like, like i say i think i think just from like tonight and announcing to the community like you know we're given the option do you want to do this they're like yeah they want to do this you know they've, they've had some input again which i think is good uh because obviously after we launched v2 there was little input the community could have I suppose they could have only had input on uh, future depths. Uh, and, and, you know, let's be honest, a lot of the decisions and everything we've made is because of the community. You know, this is why V1 came out with a centralised uh, dividend structure was so the community could have input uh, until we launched a fully immutable contract, you know, or I say, you know, as fully immutable as what it could be. Um, so again, it's kind of like we've stepped back to them old times where the community had a lot of input, and I think that's uh, that's good for the community, and that's what we want to see. You know, we want to see the community having input. We want to see them trying to make decisions, and you know, and 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 that that way they feel like you know when we follow through with the decisions they've helped to make, they've like they've they've got their own validity in the project, and they've helped make decisions towards that project, and and kind of got what they want out of it. You know, mm. so at, at, at the end of the day, you know everything now is is going to be moving forwards we're going to get v1.1 done and then like i say in the background v3 will be being worked on and as soon as it's ready it will be launched but i, I do believe it's a step in the right direction going back mm. to v1.1 yeah yeah me too me too i think i think it sounds good and yeah. just really quick here mark when is the poll the poll is that like a 24-hour poll um, I, I think 1.1 is is winning anyways. This person's asking when yeah, it's closing. The, the, that's it. The, the, the poll will just be left. I think it's that like miles out in front. Yeah, anyway. I think it's way. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah just like take your eight. time for V3. Make it rock. Um, yeah. So yeah, it. I think that's what it does. If we step back to V1.1, it gives us more time to make that V3 like rock, you know, and and mm -hmm. make it solid. 
you know, and there, there will be less pressure because the, the community will be getting divs and they will be incentivized, you know. Mm -hmm. So there will be less pressure to rush something out or, you know, push it harder than what it needs to be pushed. And mm -hmm. the devs can just take their time and get everything solid and not be under pressure. Yeah, oh, one, one, one second, yeah. Grandma. I'm, I'm finishing up the stream here. Okay. My, my grandma is asking me what, what I'm doing yeah. down here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it looks like Swift Sal Salamander left a comment. Great stream, guys. Currently working hard to get V1.1 out for you guys ASAP. Few days. Thanks for all, for all of your commitment to the project. N and no, uh, uh, th th thank, thank you, thank you, Swift. Yeah, thank you. I, I see you working hard. The man's an absolute legend. Yeah, right? the commitment He's... that man's got is unbelievable. So we we wouldn't have even had V1 if it wasn't for that man. You know, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like that was like the core, you know, the core team for like Hex Money was just uh, Swift, Swift Salamander, Michael and, and, and me, you know. But at, at, the, at the same time, we wouldn't have even had that with, without him. Yeah. You know, uh, um, you, you know he, Hex Business is owned by an actual like company. So mm -hmm. we're, we're just kind of like people that have, you know, made this happen. And, you know, I'm a designer. That's what I've done. I've designed these contracts and the ecosystem. Michael had mobile and you know the hex stop business is owned by this actual company now it's like actually not anything to do with us or whatever we're just like mm -hmm. designers that are working on it but at the same time we're still gonna you know work hard to bring everything out and and, and deliver everything for the community mm -hmm. but yeah like swift swift salamander the guy's yeah. a legend yeah 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 so you know thank you swift salamander for all your hard work um, and yeah, I remember seeing Swift, I think in like December and stuff, I saw his picture because it's like, oh, Swift Salamander, who's this guy? And I, and I, and, uh, I think, and then I saw he made the hex pool thing. And so, he, you know, he's been around for a while and, yeah. um, you know, just w working hard in the background. So definitely, you know, hats off to you, Swift Salamander. Um, keep it up. So, and yeah, T, said, T, out, T yeah, says thank you, Swift Salamander. As well, as well. They, they, they haven't actually received a lot of credit. I think they deserve a lot more credit. Yeah. Than yeah, I, mean, I so agree. Uh, I agree. Dustin, if they've, they've, they've done a brilliant job with the front end, um, and at the end of the day, that's that's like work. You, you know, that that that's going to come on really nicely for the whole ecosystem. I think we've got a brilliant team there. They've they've also got a lot of ideas for other games and that that can be added uh, for like the casino stuff, but actually on chain stuff. So it's like, you know, a lot of people don't like off-chain, but, you know, any, anybody who knows Solidity knows it's going to be hard to do anything fully on-chain with Solidity. Yeah, if it's, it's on a decent game speed, you know. So, but these guys have actually, you know, these front-end guys have actually got full work in Solidity games that actually, they actually have a solution to keep stuff fully on-chain. Might not uh -huh. be the fastest kind of game, but it's still, there's still solutions and workarounds for fully on-chain stuff for Solidity. So they're talking about bringing some of these games into the ecosystem as well. So anybody who doesn't like off-chain stuff, but just strictly wants to do on-chain stuff, then we're going to have yeah. solutions for like them people as well. Yeah, and, and I guess one question for Swift Salamander that I would have is, uh, I wonder how did you come up with your name, Swift Salamander? You know, that's <laughs> so uh, I think you know, he gets everything out swiftly. Yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> he does. Like, yeah, I, I, I think the V the V one contract was built in about four days. Four uh, days and launched. Wow! Yeah, yeah a whole lot of Very V1 swift. Contract. Very swift. <laughs> mm. And 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 also uh, shout out to Ecker Viss. Um, he's, and he reached out to me and, and I think I gave him a shout out before cause he made my, my pictures or he, yeah, he man. made, he made the, the picture that I'm using currently. And, and, and I really like his style a lot. I think it's yeah, very this, clean. This he, he designed the, the V1, uh, you know, the V1 website. So yeah, okay, basically yeah. the, the actual backdrop of the website was designed by Lewis. And so was all the, the UI for like hex money and everything. Mm -hmm. So and he got that done quickly as well, and it just got implemented. It, it, this man works at lightning speed as well. Yeah, yeah, so I see, like, yeah. You got Swift Salamander and Louis Ecrivi, but at the at the end of the day, like he works as fast as lightning. Anything he touches, you ask him to do something, and three seconds later, it's done. You know, it's like I, I don't know, I don't even know how he does it. You literally say something to him, and a minute later, there's something back there in your inbox. Yeah, but th that's the thing that drew me into like the like hex money and hex is just you know seeing people and kind of working with people or being with people that are kind of they're passionate. They have the passion, 
Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, that's, that's why I got, I, it drew me in. That's, that's the thing that kind of drew me in. And so, and who, who were, who designed the hex mobile UI? Um, I believe that was, um, was it Kevin? Uh, Jared, actually, I think it was a mixture between Jared and, uh, Kevin, but Jared was the designer of the actual interface of the mobile and Salamander implemented it. Okay. Yeah, because I thought the the Hex Mobile UI was, was pretty clean and fresh too, but I think that was only the, that's only the beta, correct? Or that's like, you know, I guess. But yeah. yeah there's, I, but... So there's there's the mobile 3.0 that's coming out. Um, oh, okay. Have you seen the new designs? The white the white background. They've been posted in the group quite a I, few times. I think I have, but it's it, you know I've seen some. It's just like it's you know I think I have. I think I did see it. It's like a white. Yes, I think I did see that actually. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's it's white, it's white and blue, correct? Yeah, that's it. So that's yeah. that's gonna be like the mobile three point oh. Okay. Uh, e e even the mobile app, I don't know if you've downloaded it and used it, but even even the app that's out at the moment, it's like it's 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 a blinding it's a blinding app to use. You know, it's like yeah. it's actually really well designed. It's it yeah, works. I agree. I agree. It's it's out on iOS and Google, so you know, it, it might only be on test flight on OS, but it's out and it and it works and it's usable. You know, it's just that the, the problem we seem to hit with that is that you know people just want that free mint of hexy. You know, and it's yeah. like until that free mint of hexy is there, that mobile that mobile adoption should be like much higher than what it is. And yeah. it's you know, because I, it, I, I agree, it, it's, it's a good onboarding tool for like hex users. Yeah, it's it's very useful. And one of my friends doesn't have like a laptop or anything, and I had to help them do stakes with the hex mobile app and that and that is still used the, the only other way mobile there's a thing called like what is it um app hex dot win and i'm token or something you have to use yeah. like two things together and i i didn't look into it too much because i thought you know the hex mobile app it's already done it looks very clean nice user interface very easy to use what's the point in me trying to do some kind of like little phone hack thing yeah. Um, so that was my thoughts, but yeah, that's, I, I, I think it's great. I, I really do think the mobile app is great. I think that's, and yeah. if we can, if, if, if I think, I think also, I think also, if, if so the, I think more, I, the more solutions there are for onboarding hex users that it's, it's like, that's, that's how it should be looked at is the more the merrier basically. Hmm. And, and, and I was going to say, if we could, you know, incentivize something for once the adoption amplifier ends in hex, you know, some kind of like referral thing or Freeman thing or something with the, with the mobile app, I think that'll be crucial. I think that'll be, that'll be awesome going forward because like I said, people, they'll be looking for the new referrals and things. And when there's no AA referrals, then it's like, oh, that's, there's no more AA. So I think that's, we could, that that's a really good thing to use for the mobile app after the AA ends, just like try to incentivize something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I say, we've already got solutions in place that we're working on for that. Uh, and, and you, you know, like, like I say, the mobile app will be used as just a gateway to the whole of the Hexy ecosystem and Hex business ecosystem. So at the, at the same time, you know, it, that, that will still be inclusive of using like staking Hex and everything through the mobile app. And we've also got like another couple of tokens out. So potentially they can be used as incentive tools as well. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Swift Salamander replied. He says, there is a species of salamander that only moves once every few years. I like the irony. <laughs> <laughs> Swift Salamander. There you go. <laughs> and there's a question here from Sir Crypto. And he said, who designed HXB UI? Very clean look for gambling. Yeah, that was the, uh, the, the Marco team. So couple of people that are uh, active in the chat at the moment but like i say these these, these front end guys are the people i'm saying deserve a bit of credit at the moment mm -hmm. because i think they're doing a fantastic job and they haven't actually like received any credit really like on all these shows or anything yeah yeah it's been it's been just kind of bad timing i think with like the the the, the glitches coming up and then the extreme fud and it's just like it's you know, and everyone got very negative and pessimistic. So, but yeah, you did, I think definitely a lot of people got to you know, everyone's been hard. Uh, Swift and the guys working on the UI for everything. Um, uh, uh, Ecker, Vis, and everybody else. There, there's a lot of people. Uh, Crypto Girl, I saw her. She's she does great moderating at the chats. Uh, Prince Prince Hexy, he's always in there. Uh, Max 10KX, Brennan. 
Um, who else? I mean, there, there's so many people working together, just very strong. A whole team of people that are like pulling together and making everything run smoothly. And that, that goes from like the admins to the front end guys to legal people. Um, there's like a whole wealth of people working in the background that people don't even get to see. Right. And it's like, you know, everybody is just pulling together to try and make this work. And it's like, we, you know, we, we have, we have done everything we've said. Yes. We've missed a couple of deadlines. And at the same time, I, I don't believe what we have missed is anywhere near as bad as some of what, uh, some of the other projects in crypto have done. You know, I believe we've stuck to our word. We've got things out quicker than most other projects. Um, yes, we've hit some, you know, we've hit some technical issues, but at the same time with, you know, we're, we're still following through and delivering what we're saying we're going to deliver and we're still here. You know, we're, we're not the exit scam that people have tried to portray us to be. And, you know, we, we, we will get there. It's just we're, we're learning as we go, so to speak. And, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, persistence pays off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I, I'm very optimistic. And I just, you know, I'm just trying to stay positive. And not only with crypto, just with life in general. You know, things come at you. And you have to kind of, you just have to adapt and you have to kind of just, you have to just uh, see it for what it is, assess it, assess it, the situation exactly. and, and make your own choice. You know, you, it, things are going to come at you in life all the time, you know, uh, ups and downs along the way. And you just, you have to adapt to whatever comes at you. Exactly. So, the, the, the more this goes on as it is, the, the more we're adapting and learning to like adapt quicker. And it's like, like, like I say, you know, a lot of a lot of crypto projects in this position would have said, right, we're just going to have to tell the community it's going to be at least two months until they get what they want. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many crypto projects out there that would do that now and mm -hmm. just say, right. And they're just and, and they probably wouldn't even communicate with the community within them two months. They'd just say, right, you know, this is this is this is where we're at. This is what you get in. And at the end of the day, we'll see you in two months. Basically, we're not doing that. We're saying, right, this is our solution. Um, our main solution is going to take two months. And this is another thing we can do. So at the end of the day, this, this, this is what we're doing. We're trying to appease the community and deliver the best solution at the same time. So, so I, don't see many, I don't see many people trying to do that in this position. You know, they're, they're, most other projects would probably go for one or the other, you know. And at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're rolling... Uh, both solutions into one into one solution basically and trying to kill two birds with one stone and it's mm. like you know we, there's not going to be any harm come from that but at the same time there's a lot of other projects that wouldn't go to this length that we're going to now to you know do that basically mm -hmm. yeah and it looks like swift Sal swift salamander said that uh for once the referral after the a Hello. And it looks like we may have lost Lotto. I believe we lost Lotto there. Can you guys still hear me? Swift says refs get bonus from only staking interest on stake end. This will allow a referral system for Hex to live on forever long. Yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty cool. Um, if we can kind of use something that goes on with the you know that um, uses that gets into the staking system and kind of something that incentivizes going forward, um, I think that'll be good because people are always looking for referrals, especially if you can kind of implement that into the Hex mobile app. And I don't know what happened with Lotto here. Looks like um, I don't know if he was on his phone. His phone died. Or if he's on his computer and his computer died. Um, lots of dApps in the works. So, yeah, uh, Swift, keep up the great work, man. The, you know, the Swift Salamander. Um, and, yeah, keep it up, everybody. Uh, T, keep it up, T, Ecker, Sir Crypto, um, Hex.Business Account, Crypto Girl, um, Despite to Jefe. 
awesome job and with the Spanish. And Mark Williams says, come back, Lotto. It's 4.30 a.m. in the U.K. Um, yeah, not really sure what happened here with Lotto, if he's coming back or not really sure what happened. Let me see if I can kind of – before I – let me just try to get a hold of him and see if he's coming back on. And if I can't get a hold of him, then I guess I'll just kind of have to end – the stream here and also my my grandma was kind of asking what i'm doing um but let's see here um let me see hey bro you coming back i just sent lotto a message let's see if he gets back in here um pull up my thing here hex money over here and uh, let's give him like five minutes. Let's see if he comes back. Um, let's, let me just check the prices of things over here really quick. And Hex is Hex is rallying a little bit here. Um, and let's see if it follows that parabola that I drew. That would be kind of cool. Again, I'm anticipating Hex one cent in uh, August 10th-ish. To a penny that's kind of what i'm thinking um and i don't know what happened to lotto we're having a good talk i'm guessing that um i don't know maybe he just lost internet or his phone died or something um yeah it kind of sucks because we're just we're just getting having a good talk there uh, not sure what happened with Lotto. Let me just kind of. So yeah, that's a quick little. I drew a parabola thing on the chart. It was kind of hexy, but if we're going to be going to a new system, this will probably become obsolete. This kind of thing there. Um, hex a lot, hex money. I was looking at Uniswap. Uniswap v2 liquidity is kind of. Um, liquidity is really increasing on v2 and on v1 it's like going down so maybe more projects will start transitioning from v1 to um v2 i don't know that that looks to be the trend there um and v2 just started and hex's main liquidity is on v1 it's the number one most liquid token on v1 um So that's something to really kind of watch here. Okay, I, I, I'll be up in like 10 minutes. I'm just finishing up the stream, if that's okay. Okay. My, my grandma's asking what I'm doing. I think she packed me something. And... Uh, 369 crypto what's going on man what did i miss no i was talking with lotto um kind of going over some things but it looks like we lost him i was kind of giving him, him some time to see if he comes back but i think that's pretty much it i kind of went over everything i wanted to go over um regarding hex hexy um just kind of uniswap and stuff like that and i don't it doesn't look like he's coming back i'll give him a couple more minutes here but i'm probably gonna have to sign off because my grandma kind of wants me to uh kind of head out and um so i don't want to really you know upset anybody um but yeah overall um you know i, I thought that was a good talk with lotto um you know always nice to kind of I, I, I like his brain i like to talk with him um because i just feel like he's i don't know he's very intelligent i like the way he thinks about tokenomics and things and again you know just kind of thinking on the fly just with all this now and kind of you know, seeing the, um, uh, you know, kind of just having to adapt to different market situations and things like that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do I do like his brain and his thinking. Um, so, yeah, always enjoy, you know, talking with him and kind of bouncing back ideas about different things, uh, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's great talk. And especially now with all these changes and things now, just kind of hear. I messaged him on Telegram if he's coming back. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, let's see. 
Yeah, and if you guys haven't yet, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, and uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Um, Jack Sparks, I'm in for a long call. I've got confidence in the team. I'm in to make it. Yep. Yep. Hi, Grandma. We love you. Spoiled Ryan. <laughs> Modern simplicity. And yeah, I see modern simplicity in the in the telegrams too. Great job, man. Keep it up with the moderating and everything. Uh, lots of really solid people uh, in in the Hex Mobile and Hexy and everything. Uh, that's kind of what I, that's like I said, that's what kind of drew me in. Everybody working together, strong team. Um, and I think, uh, I think Law is coming back on, but if he comes on, we'll kind of do a closing thing and I'm going to have to end here because my, my grandma's kind of, you know, um, Cool. I can't. Cool. Going to have to finish soon. Fun. Goodbye. Let me send him the invite here so we can kind of say goodbye, you know. Stand by, just, oh, wait, here, here he goes. Hey, there you go. I was wondering yeah, what happened. Mike, sorry about that. The internet cut out. Oh, Can okay, yeah, that's, that's what I figured. But, yeah, I was uh, yeah, I was kind of going over some closing thoughts, and uh, my, my grandma came down again, and she's like, hey, what are you doing? So I was just saying, you know, I'm going to probably be ending it here. But, yeah, you know, great that, you know, if you just want to come yeah, back so, and whatever. So, just, no, I, li I, li I literally just come back to say, like, goodbye anyway but yeah like, like i say to the community um everything is being worked on everything we said we're going to do we're going to deliver and at the end of the day we, we just want to put like the community's mind at ease and like i say you know we, we've had votes in the community and they've voted to do this so we're going to do it where we offer like try and kill two birds with one stone we still get that v3 contract that you know is is going to be that core contract that will hopefully just be the the end contract that will ever have to be launched for uh like hex money and then all the surrounding dApps can just be added to that and in the interim we can just launch v1.1 um which should take us like i say it'll be taking like a step back um but at the same time it will deliver the goods that the initial uh like v1 contract delivered mm. and at the same time the community should hopefully get best of both worlds out of that scenario yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Cool. So, yeah, but yeah, and, uh, and I was just telling them, you know, I, I always enjoy having a talk with you. And, you know, I, I really like how your brain works and just kind of bouncing back ideas and everything. Um, so, yeah, it, it was great to have you on. Yeah, and, definitely. And, and anytime in the future, anything, you know, if you ever want to, uh, you know, have a talk or, you know, talk about some kind of update or something, you know, just shoot me a message and we cool. can, you know, we could do some kind of a stream or something. It, it, it's, it's always like a pleasure to speak to someone who's level headed, you know, and at the end of the day, you're one of these people, you're one of these faces in the crypto community who's like very level headed. You know, and you. at the same time, you're, you 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 kind of sit on the fence with everything, and you make your own mind up. Mm. And at the same time, a lot of people aren't doing that. A lot of people are like maximalists, or you know, they've got an agenda, or they think what we're doing is going to hurt something they're into, or it's going to hurt their bags. And it it's not that at all. It's like everything we've designed and what we've set out to do is this, is to assist hex, you know, and that's all it ever has been. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people don't want that. I, I think a lot of people just want to see, um, you know, they they want to see us crumble. Or like I said, I think a lot of people were pissed off when we came out with V2 because they thought after V1, that was it. We were just going to go and close the doors up and, you know, not return. And when, when we do keep doing all these things and we do stick around and we don't exit scam and we do keep pushing forward, it's like it kind of hurts their agenda because they want to see us fail. Um, but you know, that, that's not going to happen. Like this project is here to stay. It's as simple as that. And it's mm -hmm. only going to grow. It's not going to get smaller. It, it's, it's just going to keep growing because we've designed something that has like infinite possibilities to keep adding dApps to this ecosystem. And, uh, you know, this is literally just the beginning, you know, and, and when you build something like this, it's not an overnight process as much as the community want it all now. 
You know, e e even like this position, what we're in now, we're, we're trying to do something to appease the community and also to deliver the, you know, the main goods which need to be delivered. Um, and I believe this 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 uh, like scenario we're in now, just just from doing this, will do that, and, and it will achieve like the desired results. And at the end of the day, like I say, the whole team are working hard in the background to deliver it. And at the end of the day, it will get done. So mm -hmm. you know, to all the community out there, just just hang tight. And at the end of the day, you know, we we keep doing what we're 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 doing and what we have mm -hmm. been doing from day one. You know. Mm -hmm. And even if you say slow progress is better than no progress, it's like, you know, we're still delivering. Whatever anybody says, we're still delivering. And and like I say, I think this solution is just a step in the right direction to give everybody what they want and what they need. And at the same time, you know, just just, yeah. just hang tight with us. And at the end yeah. of the day, we, we, we will let our, you know, we will let our facts do the talking of what we deliver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And, and, all, and, and one quick thing too, it just popped in my head. We uh we did do that the twenty that twenty k uh, airdrop recently right and then there's another yeah yeah we done yeah. I, I think someone mentioned actually uh, I, I I saw that today I think yeah I, th I think the, they said is it forty k I will have to double check but I think that thirty k might have been done I think someone might have corrected us yeah, I thought it was forty k but you know I, I've been doing a hundred and one things in the background yeah so at, at 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 the same time it might well be that only thirty k has been dropped but I believe it might be forty but. You know, if it it could be that the community members right, and there's only thirty k that's been airdropped, which would mean there's twenty k to be to be to be airdropped still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, and 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 those are great things. You know, that's helping everybody out too. You know, just getting those things out there. You know, there's a lot of projects that wouldn't even be doing those kind of airdrop things. E exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, we 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 we've got we've gone above and beyond with things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and and even with like when we took the hexy free mint away. Um, because it was just kind of too powerful and was kind of like hurting the project. It's like yeah, that, yeah. that that 10k a day airdrop, you know. That was big. Most, yeah. most other projects wouldn't have done that because it was it was a free mint scenario. You mm -hmm. know, it was something that was going to be minted for free, but we've done that to incentivize the community and show that we mm -hmm. do actually care. The same as like what we're saying with the small fish, you know, we're looking at solutions for that, you know. And at the end of the day, these solutions, they're not overnight fixes. You know, you 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 need to you, you need to do Farrar and D on them. You need to get the solutions in place and then deliver them. You know, you, you not just that, but you also need to test them solutions. And it's like you know, a, a, as much as everybody wants it now, 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 you can't just deliver it now. It, mm -hmm. Everything just yeah, takes, it takes time. time. Yeah, that, that that that's it. And just because something takes time, it doesn't mean we're going to exit scam. It's just like at the end of the day, all all it means is it just takes time. Just give us that time, you know. Yeah. We, 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 people need to see in the community that we are bending over backwards now, like literally bending over yeah. backwards for yeah, the community. Really. And, yeah. and that is to show that we care about the community, you know. Mm. We're not just saying, no, you can wait the two months that it's going to take to get this V3 finalised and sorted. We're saying, look, we're, try we're, we're trying to help you at the same time. We're trying to take a step back so we can take a step forward together. You know, if we, if we can't help you along the way, then it's not good enough for us. If it's not good enough for us, it's not good enough for you. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're just doing everything we can and just trying to, to, to deliver the best solution possible for everyone involved. And, you know, that we're, we're always going to do that. Even once V3 is uh, launched and we're just, we're, you know, once, once we're just relying on surrounding dApps, if we have a similar issue with the surrounding that we would we will use the same motto moving forwards and it's like you know this is this is always going to be the way we're going to do things we're going to try and do things the best way we're always going to ask the community for their input we're also we're always going to ask the community how they want us to do things what their suggestions are if, if we suggest something that you're not happy with tell us why you're not happy with it you know we create a poll and give the community feedback because we believe the community deserve feedback you know, or they deserve to have a voice in everything we do because it is a community driven project. Mm -hmm. And 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 this is all we this this is all we can do moving forward is just keep moving in this direction and giving the community what they want. And I, I believe we will be like triumphant in this. And yeah. like I say, this is just the beginning. So at the end of the day, imagine what it can be like in a year or two years' time. You know, yeah. imagine how many DAPs will be in that ecosystem. That ecosystem should be thriving. And at the same time, if every single one of them backed except Hex, then at the end of the day, I believe we'd have created a decent ecosystem for Hex as well. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. So yeah, again, I, I I'm gonna have to end here because my yeah, grandma course. she's really getting oh, but but uh, I, yeah. I need to come on just to say like I'll see you later, and obviously like I say the internet cut out, so I yeah. thought I'm gonna say bye. Yeah, yeah, and, and and again, you know, uh, you know, I really enjoyed our talk today, and I I really like you know talk. I really like your mind, how it works, and I always enjoy our, our conversation together. So you know, anytime in the oh. future, just shoot me a message. We can do something again in the future. And for anybody out there, anyone in the audience, any questions, go to Telegram. That's where everything, that's where all the stuff we'll, is at. We'll, and we'll get Michael back on as well for the next one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and, and Michael as well. And um, and who knows, maybe I'll be doing some other things too with other people. And it's sometimes I'll just do a stream and people come in. You know, it's it's hard to even plan these things out and stuff. But again, if for anyone who has questions, go to the Telegram. That's where all the main stuff is. And I think that's it. Yeah, and if you guys haven't yet, smash that like button, subscribe. Um, and, and again, Lotto, you know, uh, you know, thanks for coming in, uh, you know, and, uh, super good talk today. So definitely, um, all right. Brilliant stuff. Good talk. Right, to you, Ryan, yeah. mate. I'll catch you later. All right. All right. Good, Have a good mate. one. And, uh, right. see you guys. Right. Bye. Okay. See you guys, everybody. Have a good one.